This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hello and welcome to Beautiful Savior's Virtual Worship. My name is Pastor Andrew Miller. I'd like to thank you for watching wherever and whenever you are. We have been attending summer school with our Savior Jesus, learning lessons from some of his parables and miracles in the Gospel of Matthew. Today, Pastor Crucial will guide us through two more parables in Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 to 52. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn is arranged and sung by Koine. It's called, Christ is the World's Light. Christ is the world's light, Christ and none other, born in our darkness, He became our brother. If we have seen Him, we have seen the Father, glory to God on high. We have come into the presence of God, who created us to love and serve Him as His dear children. But we have disobeyed the Lord and deserve only His anger and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to Him and plead for His mercy. 
Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. Now may God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. Sing along to this upbeat version of the Sanctus, arranged and sung by Koine. The New Testament lesson is written in Romans chapter 8, verses 28 to 30. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. This is the word of our Lord. Sing along to our sermon hymn based on Psalm 23, which was arranged and sung by Koine. It's called, The Lord's My Shepherd, I'll Not Want. shepherd I'll not want He makes me down to lie In pastures green He leadeth me The quiet waters by soul he doth restore again and me to walk doth make within the paths of righteousness in Thou art with me 
shall surely follow me and damn God's house The word of God for us this morning is from Matthew chapter 13, beginning at verse 44. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. My friends, grace, mercy, and peace are yours through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me begin by asking you two questions. Given your circumstances and situation in life right now today, what would you say is your dearest possession? Or to put it another way, what are you missing in your life today that you pray for every day and night without fail? Think about it for a moment. If you have just come through a serious operation or faced a health issue that became a matter of life and death, your greatest desire could be your good health. Or if you are facing the prospect of having to deal with a life-threatening or chronic illness or disease, your fondest, most heartfelt prayer might well be that you be granted a healthy life in the future, free of pain and heartache. If you have children, grandchildren, or other relatives living far away from here, I would guess that your deepest yearning might be that your loved ones be kept safe from harm and danger and kept in the faith until you meet again. Maybe your daily prayer that you lay before the throne of grace is that God will cause peace, justice, and equality to break out around the world so that no one experiences the agony of danger, injustice, and inequality. If you are facing the prospect of losing your job or your home or many of your worldly possessions in these uncertain times, maybe your deepest longing is for job security and the peace of mind that comes from knowing that you and your family are being well cared for. If sin, such as hardship, selfishness, pride, or stubbornness are tearing apart the fabric of your family, maybe your greatest desire is that you experience the joy and peace and love that come when relationships are healthy and strong again. Any one of these heartfelt desires or cherished blessings, as well as a host of others, could be near and dear to your heart today. Every single one of them is important. And I don't want to belittle them in any way. And yet, and yet there is one need that you and I have that is so far greater in value than any of these. That need is the kingdom of heaven. Now, the kingdom that Jesus speaks about here is both his rule or his presence in our hearts through faith. That is, if we believe in Jesus as our Savior, then Jesus has already begun his rule within us. But it also refers to his kingdom in heaven that place that we look forward to living with Jesus when he comes to bring us home one day. Today, by means of four short parables, Jesus manages to help us get our priorities right. And then he shows us how he will tackle all those other things that are bothering us and eating away within us. 
First, Jesus says, I want you to understand that the kingdom of heaven is more precious to you than anything else in the world. This is how he puts it in two short, very familiar, simple parable stories. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Okay, we understand that if a man plows up a hidden treasure in a field, he's going to do everything in his power to secure the newfound treasure, even going so far as to buy the field. And if a merchant finds a precious pearl, he's going to sell his pearls and possessions of lesser value to get the better pearl. But what do these things have to do with the kingdom of heaven? The point is this. Men and women will go to great lengths to secure for themselves something they consider to be valuable. What's so unique about the kingdom of heaven, however, is that not a single one of us has the ability to get it on our own. We don't have enough money to buy it. All the money in the world is not enough to buy the kingdom of heaven for even one person. We can't do enough to earn it for ourselves because the price to purchase the kingdom is a perfect life. Not just a life in which we try our best, but a perfect life lived perfectly according to God's perfect standard. And that's what makes the kingdom of heaven priceless to you and me. What we could never buy or earn or deserve, God gave to you and me as a free gift, courtesy of the perfect life and all atoning death of Jesus, God's Son. As happens so often with these simple parable stories that Jesus tells us, this is an occasion for us to humbly marvel at God's unbelievable, undeserved love for us. He gave us the kingdom of heaven freely of his own will. He loved us so much that he left the kingdom of heaven itself to come into our world, become one of us, live among us, live perfectly for us, and then take our sins and the punishment for our sins on himself on a cross of death. What we could not have, he has given to us. Wow! Imagine it. The kingdom of heaven is yours. The priceless gift that cost more than you or I could pay is ours for free and forever. What's well, just as remarkable is that this priceless gift is freely offered to the entire world. It's not just for you and me. It's a gift, a free gift for people of every nation, language, people and tribe, of every nationality, race, and economic status. It is a gift for the whole world to have and can only be lost if a person intentionally throws it away. Listen, once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The net of the good news about Jesus and the kingdom of heaven that he has won for us, that's good news for the whole world to hear. One of the glorious privileges that the God of grace gives to people like you and me, people who have been brought to faith in the forgiveness of sins through Jesus Christ, and so made citizens of the kingdom of heaven, one of his blessings is to allow us to be partners with fellow Christians to bring God's good news to others across our country and around the world. Whether those who hear our proclamation will believe the good news about Jesus is not up to us. It's simply our joyous honor to proclaim the news. Here's another wow. Imagine this. The God of grace gives people like you and me who are righteous because we have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. He gives us the opportunity to be the ones to bring the good news about the priceless gift of the kingdom of, of heaven to the world in our time. More than 7 billion people live in the world with us today. Each one of them is a soul for whom Jesus lived and died and for whom the kingdom of heaven is a free gift. Seven billion people who need to hear the good news. Seven billion people who have been had perhaps 70 years or less for us to reach them with the good news of God's amazing grace in Jesus. 
or 70 years from now, every one of the uh, 7 billion who are alive today will be dead and the separating of the work of the angels will begin for those 7 billion people. Can you sense the urgency in this parable that you and I need to consider the work of spreading the gospel of Jesus, our highest priority? Matthew tells us that Jesus finished his conversation with his disciples this way. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. For the benefit of his first disciples and for us who are hearing these words of Jesus today, Jesus has once again added something to our faith. Like homeowners who like the comfortable feel of the old furniture, but who like it even better when a new furnishing or a piece of furniture is added, so something has been added to your faith and my faith today. Maybe it's the reminder that the kingdom of heaven is something that we could not earn or deserve, but a free gift from God. Maybe the new thing is that we see once more the incredible grace and loving kindness that God has shown us in Jesus Christ. Maybe it's the invitation to consider the many people around the world who need to hear about Jesus yet. Or maybe the new thing is the opportunity for us to get our priorities straight again. After all, what is the most important, dearest possession you have in your life today? It isn't health or wealth or peace or security or safety or good relationships. It is the gift of eternal life, the gift of the kingdom of heaven. And here's the real wow today. When we see and understand through faith how much we are loved by God and that we are his dearest possession, then we can trust him to give us all the other things we are so concerned about too. For Paul says, he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? When we rest in Jesus, we can trust him for the health, the wealth, the peace, the security, safety, and bond of unity, and all the other things that we are so concerned about. And we can be assured that he will provide them in the perfect measure, in the perfect manner, and the perfect degree that he knows is best for us. Wow! We are the kingdom of heaven, and all these things will be, have been added to us as well? <laughs> Imagine that. Amen. Now, the peace from God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's pause here for our offerings. You know by now that you're able to give and set up recurrent gifts on our website, mybeautifulsaviorchurch.com forward slash give. Or if you prefer to drop off your offerings at church or mail them to our address, you can certainly do that also. Today I'd like to show you just a few ways that your gifts are helping not only to maintain our gospel ministry during this COVID crisis, but also to make needed repairs and improvements on our campus. In April, the fencing and rails around our preschool playground were repainted, along with the dumpster area doors and the parking lot lights. In May, every preschool room was repainted. In June, special gifts allowed us to repaint the administrative offices and to replace the old, worn and torn carpet. In July, a new sign was installed in the office. And a troublesome tree was removed from the berm adjacent to the parsonage. Of course, your offerings continue to support not only our pastors and various ministries, but they also support our Synod's mission work all across the country and the world. Now, as much as ever, we thank the Lord for his generosity and also for your regular and generous Christian giving. Thank you. Now please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is arranged and sung by Koine. It's called, We Give Thee But Thine Own. Thank you for worshiping with us virtually today. We pray that Jesus, our Savior, strengthens your faith and gives you ears to hear and hearts to believe all he has taught us. I have two important reminders to share with you. First, our sanctuary renovation will begin on Monday, August 3rd. Our last in-person worship service in the current sanctuary takes place Sunday, July 26th. That's today. Our first worship service in the preschool will happen on Sunday, August 2nd. The second reminder is that worship times have now changed. Through the end of the COVID phase two, however long that is, we will worship on Sundays at 8 a.m., 9.30 a.m., and 11 a.m. Now help us share the good news of Jesus Christ. Hit that like button, share this video, follow the links at the end of this video to support our ministries and stay connected to Beautiful Savior through our website mybeautifulsaviorchurch.com, our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, and Instagram. May our beautiful Savior bless and keep you.